is meant for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm-hmm. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Drew. Yep. Hey, you sound oh. decent. How about that? Where are you in KC? I'm in Kansas City. What you doing over there? Gave a talk at Truman State University. Uh oh. Yeah, it was three hours from here. Three hours out and three hours back. <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't make that. Make the, uh, Anderson, do you have a sound effect that, you, you remember when the guy would come by an ice cream truck and he would make change with that change belt? <laughs> Just a ch- ch- couple of nickels coming out, maybe a dime. No, 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 no. <laughs> do they have change belts anymore? Remember those? I remember those things. They're like four, the, each the pennies, quarters, dime. Vegas has uh, plenty of them. As a, as a kid, there was something like surreal about a guy with a striped shirt. He'd have the white and red striped shirt, like the ice cream guy I always remember had that, and he'd yeah. lift that front of the shirt up, and there was a huge belt buckle filled with money. <laughs> and all he had to do is hit this one lever, and a quarter would come out, and the other lever, yeah. a nickel would come out. And the thing about it, too, is is when you're a kid, you, you think, I don't know, how much is in there? 100,000, 500,000, maybe a million. Infinity, it just keeps coming. Yeah, it was like it was a bottomless quarter belt. If I could only get my hand on one of those belts. Little did I know the tremendous losers that were donning those belts. I had no idea, but uh, I do like the idea of one of those. I think I may get one just to wear it around. I think my kids really thought that they made money. They created money. You mean it was like they create, like the manufacturers of the belt buckle made it? or No, it's a little machine that made money. Oh, really? You just push on and money came out. Yeah, that's great. Good times. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so you're over there in KC. It's good. How's the weather? I uh, drove through a couple of storms on the way across Missouri. I've been across the state. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's good times, mm-hmm. lovey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I quit doing those things, you idiot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really, you know, I, I literally jumped out of my car and ran up here as as you came on the air. So I don't have much time to think. Yeah. Well, there so, is a there time. is a sort of catch twenty two of uh, doing those colleges, which is the further away and the farther off the beaten track they are, the more they want you. The more they appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Just the more desperate they are. <laughs> those, those colleges you, you do are like the fat chicks at the TGI Fridays <laughs> on a Friday <laughs> yeah. night. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? What They're desperate. Say? They're desperate. They're much more receptive to you coming over and buying them a drink. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. UCLA, well. it's right next door, doesn't want you. There's a thousand colleges within uh, 200 yards of your house, Drew. None of How them. How's your day? Good times. Good times. All good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Working on the house, you know, writing a couple jokes. The usual. Yeah. All right. You ready to rock? Yeah. I'm picking the calls, right? Yes, you are. Yes. I'm just going to go in order. Angela? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go by height tonight. How tall are you? I'm 5'9. Five 5'9. Nine. Five nine. Hold on. Lauren? Yeah. How tall are you? 5'1. Five one. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. Oh, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen's a dude. Hey, we shouldn't we put pit them against the ladies in the height it's not game, fair. right? Not fair. No, no, not no. fair. Doesn't Lily. Matter. Yeah. How tall are you? Five ten. Five ten. Wow. Ooh, that's a that's a front runner so far. But but Melanie over here hasn't gone yet. Let's see. Yeah, Melanie. Five zero. Five zero. Five foot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you'll be going last. Okay. And unless a midget calls up. All right. <laughs> All right, so hold on. All right, so I believe it was Lily. It's going to be a long night because the bulk of the night is going to be me trying to figure out who's tallest to see what order to put them in, okay? Oh. Lily? Yeah. You're uh, 5'10? Yes. You're 22? Yes. What's up? Well, um, I've been married for almost a year now, and I work with this guy who's uh, kind of like. He says uh, very sexually explicit things to me, and at mm-hmm, first, mm-hmm. Kind of, how tall is he? <laughs> how tall is he? He's a little yeah. shorter than I am. Shorter than you. Yeah. Okay, so he would go after you. I think okay, Adam, when you ahead. sit in that when you sit in that big studio by yourself, you become like expansive. You know what I mean? It affects your psychology. <laughs> well, I'm like I'm like a prisoner. I have to find ways to keep myself occupied. You know, oh my God. Uh, to keep my mind busy. So, how's right, your marriage so- going, Lily? 
Huh? How's your marriage going? It's great. Uh, me and me and him have a really good uh, marriage. Uh, mm-hmm. Right now, we're kind of in a rocky state uh, part because uh, I work days, he works nights. We have yeah. a child. That's good. And, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you thinking about doing something with this guy at work? No. No, no, no. What, I don't even like him. I, what's you know, the question? Maybe what's the as question? a friend. And I've told him, you know, I've told him I'm married. I've told him I can't do that and stuff like that. And he just doesn't let up. <laughs> What, what kind what of is work the question? do you do? Yeah, what Auto do you body. Want? Auto body work? Mm-hmm. I think um, car. What kind of car? Any car. Oh, any car. Okay. Yeah. And is he out, you know, uh, sanding Bondo and banging fenders and you're in the office? No, I am out in the shop. You, what do you do out in the shop? I paint. I uh, fix dents. I... Oh, you do? Yeah. You 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 gotta you you load up the uh, airless sprayer and uh, go into the go. Well, actually, you guys don't use airless sprayers, yeah, do you? No, we, we use uh, air sprayers, air guns. And you, yeah, compressor driven stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You and you are actually spraying it on the cars, huh? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah. You are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How dare you, Adam? What do you think? One of our callers wouldn't be professional at what, what they do. What kind of primer do you use? Oh my God! Uh, it all depends on what kind of myself. metal, what kind of bare metal we have. It's either self etching primer or some black primer, depending nice. on the color. Yeah. All right. So you you're spraying stuff. That's a decent gig. How much you get an hour? Uh, flag hour about nine dollars an hour. All right. Ooh. That's not so great. So, Ooh. but listen, Lily, you got to tell this guy to back off, or you're going to report him to uh, the Earl of Shibe. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, Johnny you, Carson <laughs> reference from uh, 1975. Wow! I know well, yeah, I did. Yeah, but right. look, you have it's against the law for him to do this. He's in, getting big trouble. You, the owner would get in big trouble if he didn't respond to your complaints. So yeah. come on, they. Uh, but Drew, I don't think they can really prosecute those uh, body shop guys because they're all they've they've sucked up so many fumes uh, over the course of their career that they're really yeah, interesting. It, it's like trying to it's trying to prosecute a retarded person for murder or something. You know, they uh, can they slap well, him on the hand, but they don't know they're doing wrong. Well, he can have a defense, saying? but All right. still. All right, just t- tell him to stop, or you'll tell your boss. And if he keeps going, you tell your boss. How tall is your husband? He's five twelve, five uh, like six foot. Five okay. twelve, five twelve. Somewhere man. between five twelve and six foot. Yeah, well, <laughs> five twelve. <is> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, at least you caught yourself. We have had an answer where uh, they stood by their 512. Yes. I, it may, may have been 612. I can't remember. But do you remember that call, Drew? Yes. Oh, yes, I do. All right. Now, we could go to Angela on line one, who we know is 5'9", uh, I think. That's next. Right. Except for, uh, what about the fellas? What about the gents? They'll Steven? have to wait. Yeah. Hold on. How tall are you, Stephen? 5'11". Um, 5'11". Yeah. All right, hold on. I think people may be catching on to this game and lying about their height. <laughs> John? Yeah. How tall are you, buddy? 6'3". Okay. All right, so John would go uh, before Steven. So should we take, uh, let's take a fella, and then we'll get back to the ladies. John? All right, take John. Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been dating this girl for about three months, a little over three months. And um, we haven't had sex or anything. We've just kind of been, you know, doing whatever. Um, I'm 24 and I, uh, I have, I have one testicle. I've mm-hmm. had it since birth. It's not like a defect or anything like that. Um, but I don't know how to, um, show it to her. I don't know how to kind of bring it up. All right. First and of all, I've first of all, show wait, her hold the on. missing one or the one you have? What's that? <laughs> you want to show her the missing one or the one you have? All right. Well, since one really is. Show her the missing one, but I mean, just, you know, we're. We're getting to the point in our relationship where we want to move on. and um, Since when is know, not I've having... Never, I've never showed anybody. I've never showed anybody. Um, All right, quiet down. Since uh, when is not having an ugly, disgusting part of your body a problem? Uh, what are you saying, I don't know. Drew? I've had it my whole life. I've never really showed it to anybody. So it's What's it look like? A big step for me. Uh, hold uh, on a second. Hey, there's... It, 
it, there's an air of boguosity to John, perhaps maybe it's just in the repetition, you know, where he keeps right. saying, I know I've never shown it to anybody. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, well, you're going to, I've never shown it to anybody. Right. Let me let me explore this a little bit. Where's the he's other 20, testicle? He's 24 years old, by well, the way. Actually, so it's actually it's actually a sack by now. It's actually a serious thing. Where, where is the other testicle? What happened? I, I was just born with one. No, you're not just born with one. You're not. If, I, no. No, I, I, but I was. It's. I mean, you can say I wasn't, but I was. I was just born with one. You've never had that evaluated by a doctor. No, I got evaluated by a doctor, and they just said you were born with one. They didn't say anything about it. They never, you know, they well, it's not like a look, problem. It doesn't cause me any problems or anything. It's just it's actually a very serious thing because it's not that you're born with one. It's that one doesn't descend, and the one that doesn't descend stays up in your back where it starts when you're an inf where your your fetus, and if it stays there, it can become a cancer. So they should have looked around and see if it's up there. A non-descended testicle. Nothing. It doesn't drop into the sack. It just sort of remains behind. But it can be very serious. Yes, I'm quite serious. I can't understand. Nah, he's, I can't. he's pulling your chain, John. He's a doctor. They do this kind of stuff all the time. Hey, no, John. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Why didn't your pediatrician have this evaluated? Well, I had it evaluated. They looked at it, and they just said, you know, you just have one. It's not a problem. They never said that it could be cancerous. It, if it doesn't descend, they can break down and become cancerous once in a while. So they usually have to sort of all right, bring it down. I got I to put them on hold so I can talk to you. Yeah. True. Yeah. Can't somebody be born with one as opposed to an undescended testicle? I've I've never heard of that, but I imagine it can be. But the only way you can prove that is look around for the other one. It doesn't sound like All they've right. looked around. Well, let me talk to John because you yeah. guys are having difficulties. Right. John? Yeah. Did they look around for it? What do you mean, did they look around? Ultrasound, CAT scan. Um, it, the last time I was at the doctor to check it out, it was a while ago, but they did some tests. I don't know, I don't remember exactly what they did, but, um, they did tests and they, they said it wasn't a problem. So what kind of test? What kind of test? What I do you don't remember? I haven't really gotten into it again with what, them. What, so, Adam, or, you asked the questions. What, what kind of tests? Because he would, it is ridiculous. Did they, did they draw blood or did they do something that involved, you know, a more thorough test where they put you in a, you know, they did like a, a ultrasound don't, or don't a CAT scan don't the or witness. something. So. Yeah, just like I said, the last time I had it, I had that, like, went to the doctor for that. How um, long ago was that? What's that? Uh, how long oh, ago? I was, I don't know, 13 maybe? I don't even remember, to be totally honest. I don't know. John, this just sounds bogus. Okay. I, I don't know what to say to that. I, I, I mean, um, put your mom on. Let me talk to her. <laughs> I, don't, I don't live with my mom, actually, so I can't... Okay. On All right, so what is, your, what is your... Okay, so go back to the doctor and make sure... To tell them about an undescended testicle and make sure they look for one, all right? And no one's going to have any problem with the lack of a testy. And, and, and there are, so there are if, you ha if you have a problem with it, there are ways of replacing it. There, there are prostheses yeah, that can stick it? in there. Yeah, they can put prosthetics in there. Huh. All right. Yeah, they put a little glass ball in there. What's it look like? Does it look, does it look much different than your basic sack? It's a, a, well, I mean, I guess the sack doesn't look different. It's a little bigger than, a, I guess, a normal one would be. But it's not, you know... It bigger? I guess, look... What bizarre, side's missing, the right or the left? It's on the left. If it doesn't look different, why are you concerned about someone seeing it? Because we've been together, and I don't know, it's just... How would she know, know there was a, anything there if it doesn't look different? Adam, this just isn't uh, yeah. washing. It's not, yeah. it's not holding together that well, but I'm, uh, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, John. Right. She doesn't care. Don't worry about it. She will, okay. she will never even notice. All right. All right. John, there's something that uh, made me mad about John. I don't quite yeah. know what it was. There's this, I don't know. Is, is, is this one of those dicky guy things? I couldn't, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but he was a pain yeah. in the ass. Yeah. So go to the doctor and have it checked out if, in fact, this is the case. And as far as women go, the sack, it, it's like saying, I have a really ugly catfish. Yeah. And you're going, you go, <laughs> all catfish are ugly. No, That's right. this one is really ugly and I'm embarrassed. Uh, who cares? How do you get any uglier than a catfish? No, this one has like big lips and long whiskers. And they're all ugly. They're all a mess. Yes. That, that's what a sack is. It is the catfish 
of uh, there's there's uh, of body parts. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. But there's a I was talking at work about the uh, fish that they use to make a uh, imitation crab out of, which Ooh. is a uh, heinously ugly fish too. There's some really uh, fish. There's some really ugly fish. That's that's where the ugliness <clears throat> comes in in the animal world. You know what I'm saying, Drew? You're talking about the monkfish. Monk catfish. Yeah, maybe it is the monkfish. Anderson, <laughs> monkfish is that ugly? It's the yeah, it's hideous. Hideous looking, right? I mean, you know, the thing about the animal world is like, all right, you got your cheetahs. That's a good looking animal. And then it's like, well, you got your hippos, not quite as hot. And then, uh, then you got your koala bears. It just sort of seem like the, the Jews of the animal world to me. <laughs> Why? They got that schnoz and they don't move too fast. I but see. They're, but they're crafty and they're smart. You know what ah. I mean? But here's my point, Drew. Yeah. My point is, is nothing gets too ugly. But in the fish world, <clears throat> look out. That's Stuff ugly. Weird. Yeah. That monkfish is scary looking. Especially the, the deeper in the ocean you get. Oh, oh, oh. Then, then it's Dr. <laughs> oh. Seuss. <laughs> I'm going to find a picture of that monkfish. True, do you have a computer there? Yeah. Yeah, Look get, it a, up. Get, get a picture of that monkfish. Yeah, you're not going to see it, though. Just During right? the break. During the break. Right. I'll get engineer Chris. He'll, pun he'll punch up that monkfish. We'll All get right. a nice laugh about that. All right. Hey, uh, let me tell you something, too. With your, uh, in your absence, engineer Chris and I have really been getting on. Oh, really? Yeah. No talking, but some knowing glances. We've shared some knowing glances, right? There goes another one. Monkfish An kebabs, monkfish Angela, I fact didn't, sheet. All right, don't monkey with the monkfish. Oh, you're right. Wow. That's an ugly fish, right? Yes. Oh, yes. It looks like those ones wow. from deep, deep, deep in the sea. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you're eating that ugly thing. Who? Oh, okay, so your, your sack is like the monkfish. Uh -huh. I don't care how good looking the best looking one is or how ugly the ugliest looking one is. It's all a train wreck down there. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It does look kind of like a testicle. Well, that's not what I'm saying, Drew. Oh, oh, oh. What I'm saying is, is that they're all ugly. Yes. You oh, with yes. me? I'm with you. Man, I'm with it you. It does look. What about a little metaphor here? Come on, Drew. It does look like a testicle. Just kidding. A okay, sorry. Uh -huh. Angela? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah, I'm 19. Um, five eight. Five eight. Five nine. Five nine. Yeah, that's that's fine. All right. Okay. Um, go ahead. Here's my situation. I've been with my boyfriend now for about a little over 10 months. Mm -hmm. He's the first and only guy I've ever had sex with. Now, um, I don't remember quite in the beginning if it, if it was this way or not, but like now, it's like I have a big problem getting wet. Now, mm -hmm. I'm totally attracted to him, actually, probably more so than I was in the beginning of the relationship. Mm -hmm. I want to know if that's physically possible, possible if, you know, I, if I could have a problem down there, or is it just something about something else? Are you on medication? Um, birth control, that's about it. Is that new? Huh? Is the birth control new? No, I've been on it for about five months, six months now. When, when, when did the dryness start? Huh? When did the dryness start? Um, it's, it's, the, I don't, like I said, I don't really recall if it was in the beginning or not. So I'm going to say maybe seven or eight months ago. I'm not sure. So let's say maybe five months ago. Well, it Probably a good bet. Maybe it could have. It could have. It's, it's the pill. You think so? For sure. Is that the only explanation or is there, could, could there be something wrong with me? Well, it's such a common thing. The progesterone and the pill will do that. Are you on no, a combo just, pill? Go, go have the pill check. Yeah, you out. like the guy you're aroused by him? I'm sure it's the pill. I got rid of her because I, I was real. I'm now studying people, Drew, and yeah. I realize they hear you fine about all the all the stuff that's more complicated than the questions. But when you ask the questions, they say, "Huh," because yeah. they're stalling for time. Right. Also, they, it's, if it's not what they want to hear. Yeah, you know like I mean? you're talking about low overall and progesterone and all that stuff, and that's fine. They hear they're fine. Then you go, "When did your dad leave?" And they go, "Huh?" Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a time staller. It's a habit I think people get into. It buys them a little time. It's like, um, <gasps> when did your dad uh, rape you? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Anderson, boy. He's quick. Uh, all right, so go get the pill checked out. Because she was wet before, and now she's not. And the only thing yeah. different is the pill, and she's totally attracted to the guy, right? There you go. Okay. Oh, boy. Do we have to talk to a dude... No. Even over here is uh he's five ten. Let's talk uh we're going by height, but I feel like Melanie, poor Melanie over here is never gonna get tended to, so I'm gonna go over to her. Melanie? Yes. You're hi. five foot? Yes. 
I like a short gal. I know. <laughs> you do? I'm just saying. The petite cute girls are cute. Yeah, they're nice. They're solid. I mean, my boyfriend's tall, so I don't see why he's complaining. Yeah, that's good. What's up? Okay, well, my problem is that um, I was with my boyfriend for two and a half years, and we just recently broke up about six months ago. Um, mm -hmm. We have a one and a half year old daughter, so we kind of try to keep it cool for her, for her sure. sake at least. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been kind of hanging out a lot. Um, he had a drug problem before, and he had he had stopped having it. And um, but then supposedly um, due to the problems of why we broke up. Um, he he uh, he got back to his habit again, and um, I had I was abused as a kid, and the guy was never locked up, and he li he doesn't live that far away from me. So um, when I ran into him, he had uh, he's like, whoa, whoa. Oh, who who you abused know? you? Uh, my stepfather. Which stepfather. It's actually a really messed up situation. Why? How he's my stepfather? <laughs> well, how is he your stepfather? Well. Um, my mom was really stupid. I don't, that's right. the reason why I'm, she was, she was married to my dad and, um, he had a stepbrother and she kind of messed around with him and he's technically my uncle because him and my dad have the same mother. They just don't oh, have the right. same father. Wait a minute. He's your mother. He's your uncle and your father. No, he's my uncle and my stepfather. Okay. Right. Oh, my mother, like, she cheated on my father with his uh -huh. stepbrother. Yeah. Wow. Well, your oh. mother was abused. Yes, I'm sure. I, I, Chaos. She, she claims she wasn't, but I'm pretty sure she was mm. because I don't see how something like that is. Even how's possible. Grandpa? How's her dad? Um, from what I hear, her dad was great, but her mother gave her her a stepfather, and I guess he used to. He never really abused her sexually, but he kind of like came on to her. She said her mother gave her a stepfather. Stepfather. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 12th uh, birthday. Some, excuse, some girls so want a when pony. When he abused me, that's her excuse. Like, well, um, I always told my mom, I, you shouldn't judge me All because right. Let, I listen. Told Thank my God you cranked out a kid. Yeah. Mm, a goofball. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. What is, what, what, is the, um, what, what is the energy to keep the S train a rolling in effed up families? I don't know. What is that compulsion? You cannot have any more kids, Melanie. Yeah, I know. I mean, right now, my daughter is, like, my heart right now. Good. Thank God it's a girl. Yeah, yeah thank God she's a, I mean, thank God she's a girl, but the only thing that goes Well, not for her, like, but just gosh, for society. I hope she doesn't ever suffer for what I ever went through. Oh, uh, well, you know? she already is. She doesn't have a dad. Yeah, I mean, she has a dad. He's there, but he's kind of messed up because... Yeah, he drug, has a drug, drug addict dad who's he, around sometimes. Yeah. yeah that's, not, that's not a dad who's there. Uh, she's already suffered. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry for yelling at you, but no, she fine. she has already suffered for what you've went through because you got victimized, and then you hooked up with a guy who was essentially a bit of a victimizer. Now you brought another little girl into the world, and now she can thus become a victim. Hopefully, not to the extent Less that you so, were. Yes, right? yeah. yeah, it's all but relative. I understand what scares me right now. I think the reason I really called was that I I was I still see my stepfather. Mm. Um, he kind of knew the situation that I had a, a really messed up boyfriend and his drug mm -hmm. problem. But he says, do you need money, you know, for your daughter? Because I know he has a drug problem. And I was like, no. And he just kept, um, you know, dropping off checks because he knew where I lived. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I did use the money for my daughter. My boyfriend okay. was still using the money for his drugs. Oh, boy. And my point is that now he'll say, like, oh, well, you're probably sleeping with him for money. But then again, mm -hmm. when he needs money, he'll be like, well, can you ask him to let you borrow some money? Th this and is I your... Was just like, oh, you know, hold on. This you're is sleeping with your stepfather? Yeah. Your, your boyfriend is accusing you of sleeping with your stepfather? Yeah, with him for money. And I was like, you know what? You've seen All him. All right, all right. Quiet. Stuff. Listen. Listen to me. Your stepfather still married to your mother? No, 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 no. They, they split up. Okay. How long, did he, how long did he abuse you for? For a while, actually, when I was like um, 12, and I told my mother about it, and she just re she she right, knew well, like of he, course he admitted it your mom your mom's a victim your mom's yes. a victim who turned into a, a bad person and never yeah, got home. and she your mom's a good example of someone who gets victimized and never gets any help and then just that's becomes right. worse. Yeah, and than, it happened uh, to like I was like about 15 because that's when I yeah. Um, I went into high school and Ugh. I talked to a counselor there and good. He kind of oh, good. Okay, so listen, Melanie. Yeah. Here, here's the thing: you, okay. you're remarkably well put together for someone who's been through what you've been through. Mm. Mm. Obviously, you've made a few mistakes along the way. 
So let's just prioritize here. <clears throat> the guy, the father of your child, bad guy. That was a mistake. Mm -hmm. You don't need I mean, him in your... I don't really... This, that's like, I think that's where my fault... I think that's where I kind of like down myself. I don't yes. really look at him as a bad guy because at one point... Okay. He He's not a bad called... guy. He just does bad things repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Call that it what you like. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Listen. The car's not a bad car. It just breaks down all the time. The car's a good car. It just doesn't run. That's a bad car. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, look into the guy's soul. Yeah, I guess you scratch it under, under the skin of everybody. Oh, we're all God's creatures. No, and in his heart of hearts, he means, yeah, okay, everyone means, well, everyone's a great guy. We're all God's creatures. This guy accuses you of banging your stepdad who sexually abused you, says, you know, you're a whore for taking the money and is going to go do drugs instead of take care of his kid who he's abandoned. Uh, he may be the world's greatest guy. Not behaving like one. And, and by the way, Mother Teresa could have been a C. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? She could have been the world's worst person. But how, how come no one makes that argument? Yeah. How come no one defends great people? Oh, that Mother Teresa, bitch, horrible, <laughs> black soul. Well, of course, you know why you don't? No one does it. Doesn't make sense. Right. How how could it make sense? Someone who does all that good. Couldn't be a bad person. Someone who does all that bad couldn't be a good person. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well you. Well said. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be back. Hello. This is your radio. Radio. Love line. We'll be right back. As many as one in three Americans with HIV don't know it. To find a testing location near you, call toll-free 1-866-344-KNOW. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew is in Kansas City, Missouri. Yes, sir. Drew, do they call it Missouri over there? You know, I, I've been running around so much. I don't think I've heard the word Missouri since I arrived here. Arrived. Mm. All right. I was cool with the rove. Right. Uh, when are you coming back, buddy boy? Tomorrow, dude. All right, okay. We're looking forward to having you. I can't wait to see you. Can't wait to be back with you. I'll be thinking about you tonight. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Okay. I was just uh, staring at monkfish uh, during the... Uh, <laughs> I love an ugly fish, boy. Yeah. I'll tell you what I love. I love an ugly fish and a fat cat. Mm. I like a fat dog, too. Like I like it when a lab gets morbidly obese. Like, there's nothing better than a blonde lab that's super fat. And the people are always like, yeah, we got to put them on a diet. I'm like, eh, let, them, let it ride. And they're like, uh, well, yeah, but it's not good for them. I'm like, ah, so he dies at 9, he don't make it to 12. Meanwhile, you you're, enjoying, you're enjoying a big fat dog the whole time. It's better. Oh, God. All right, Drew, I'm hearing an echo over there. Is that uh, something you can correct? Uh, I don't know. Ask Chris or Anderson. Uh, all right. I don't know. Pretty much Chris says no. And let's keep moving. Uh, let's see. Let's talk to a dude. Alex over here six one. So uh, we'll talk to him. We're going by height again tonight. Height. And you have to be honest. And I can tell by talking to you how tall you are. Alex? Hi. Adam. You're 22? Yes, I'm 22. Yeah, uh, what's now, up? I have a big theory about your, your uh, doubt, you know, about the huh, about the grandma thing. The, the Mexican grandma? Yes. Yeah, it's not the who, huh, it's the who. Oh, yeah, the, the who. Okay. Right. Now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, whenever whenever you call, his name's Robert, right? Or what's his name, your friend? Who, Oswaldo? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <Oswaldo>. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, whenever you ask, ask her, you know, the grandma, she's going to say who huh, or who, whatever, you know, she's going to be pointing at Oswald or... You know, yeah. uh, she's going to be pointing, you know, signaling he has a phone call. You know, he can he can be like uh, playing video games or uh, eating or reading, whatever, you know. And uh, So she's giving him a little beat, a little warning that something's coming. Yeah, yeah, I like uh, pointing the finger, you know, saying uh, somebody's mm -hmm. calling you. 
you know, and I'll, I'll tell you that from experience. My mom still use, uses that whenever I get calls from, like, telemarketers or, like, people, you know. Oh, so you think it's a Hispanic way to give their youngins a heads up? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. exist in other cultures. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like you're saying, we haven't caught on to this? Well, I, I'm guessing, yeah, because uh, I'll tell you, my mom does it, does it still. Is she Hispanic? Mexican, yeah. Mexican, that's better. All right, I was just being polite. Oh. Uh, okay, all right. So, uh, so see, I always thought it was a way of buying time, of stalling myself, but not pointing at the person. Just uh, like when our when our callers say "what, huh, what, huh," they just they heard it the first time. Just gives them a little extra time when you repeat the question. I mean, right. life would be easier that way if you're if you're playing um, Jeopardy and Alex Trebek asks you a question. It'd be nice just to say, huh, and have him say it again while you were thinking of the answer. Huh? Yep. <laughs> I like the who part, though. That was like, uh, how many guys you know name as Waldo? All right, where are we going here, Drew? I'm going to pick uh, the tallest chick. What do you think about that? Uh, something new. Oh, come on, Drew. All right, let's talk to uh, Krista, who's 5'5". Uh, five, five. Krista? Kristen? Kristen, yeah. sorry, you're 20. What's up? Um, I've been hanging out, dating, I guess you would say, this guy for about maybe two months. And we are sleeping with each other. But I want to know if I should continue this relationship that we have or don't have and see if I can get something out of it or if I'm just wasting my time. Hold you're on a second. getting something out of it. True. you monkeying with that computer of yours? No, I just sat down in a chair. It sort of creaked. Mm, I hear keyboards. Not me. No, it's this, this is chair. I pulled. Right. I did this, and that's okay. It. Take it easy. Take it easy now. Let's fix that echo. Unless you're looking up monkfish. <laughs> All right. So, Kristen, you guys are just sort of sex buddies. Kind of, but like we we're the only people that we hang out with. Like he calls me every single night. He calls me. Not I don't call him. Mm -hmm. What do you want to get out of it? Well, I want a relationship. Not right now, but hopefully to get one, and I just want to know, like... No, wait a minute. What? You want one now. <laughs> yeah. You want one with, with this now. guy, yeah. But if he's not ready for it, I'm not going to push him into it. Uh, no. Well, if he's not ready for it, you'll be hurt and disappointed. But, like, what What should I look for if he wants real, like... Well, you, when you say to him, one. when you say to him, I want to get, get further on in this relationship... That's that's when he'll tell you what he feels. Well, how do you know you're him. not? How do you know you're not boyfriend and girlfriend now? Yeah, maybe, maybe he's ready to go. Well, I've I've talked to him about it, and oh, well. just it seems like from girlfriends he's had in the past that they've kind of just been like, like he works a lot, and they don't understand that he doesn't have time. And I totally understand mm -hmm. that. You know, I'm not gonna be able to see him every single night. Well, wait and a minute. Then, how? Okay, hold on. How old is this guy? He's 19. He's 19, he's got a 20-year-old, he calls every night, he has a lot of sex <laughs> with, he doesn't want to... He and, works and what, too much? What? What's he do? What does he do? He um, roofs, he's in construction. He's oh, for like sakes. part of, he works for his dad. Yeah, he's up there on that roof, slinging yeah. that hot mop with that tar on it. <laughs> he's miserable, his brain frying yeah. up there. Horrible. Didn't you say that's the low, lowest of the low? I, ironically, roofer, lower than drywaller. <laughs> Do you understand? Let me explain the lowest. The lowest is the hot mopper. That's the guy who tends to the liquid bucket of tar. All right? Like, here, Drew, here's the beauty. You, you see those, those kettles. You, you, see them, you see the one that, you know, you can't breathe, you're choking, it just sits at the bottom. Of yes. the, uh, it sits at the bottom of the structure there, and it's got that long sort of snorkel tube that goes up to the roof. Yes. And that, that kettle pumps up liquid tar. Oh. And it fills a bucket, and it they smells take good that too. bucket, and they literally put a mop, a regular mop, into that bu bucket, and they hot mop, they tar mop mm. the roof. And here's the thing, like, uh, and this guy's in Washington, so he's probably okay, but imagine... You're out in Chatsworth, you're out in the valley, it's the middle of the summer, it's 120 degrees, 117 degrees, and you're standing on a flat roof in the middle of some industrial park. Okay, sounds bad, right? Here's yeah. the kicker. We're going to start pumping up some liquefied tar. Yeah. Some tar that's about 220 degrees, and oh. then you can just carry a bucket of that around. Oh. Is, is that like... Uh, 
did Beelzebub invent this job? But here's like, why I don't believe. Wait, wait, wait. This is why I don't believe what this guy's saying. He's saying he's too busy to go out with this girl who's 19 or 20. Yeah, he's full of Because crap. he's busy hot mopping? Come on. That's ridiculous. Here's the whole deal. And Drew have talked about this many times. A guy, when a guy's in, and here's this thing. Let's talk about this for a second, Drew. All right. All right. Can we talk? Well, when I say, I, I, can we do it in front of everybody? Well, let's talk in front of everybody. Okay. Okay. Um, guys, society believes there's many reasons why guys don't want to be in relationships. You right. know, I'm thinking about my career. I'm focusing on school. I just got out of a relationship. I just don't want to be tied down right now. All of that is out the window if a guy is head over heels for somebody. Yes. Now, there's a small percentage of guys that have serious trouble and difficulty with commitment. Even those guys... All they do is have a series of failed relationships in which they committed. Right. Uh, but they, they, they these, still... These they guys have been, they've been divorced six times. That's different, though, than... Commitment is different than marriage in guys' minds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Guys can commit to a relationship with no intention to get married. And, because and, that, and, then the yeah. career and all that stuff does apply 100%. All right. So, ladies, when you hear a guy say... I'm just not ready to have a girlfriend right now. I'm, he doesn't like I got, you. I just got over another relationship. Here's what you hear. I'm he doesn't like on, you. Right? He just, you he should doesn't hear like it. You. He, you know, he likes you enough to F have you, sex. Yes. but not enough to actually legitimize the relationship and take yes. you out. Of yes. course. That's yes. what it is. He likes you 65 to 70 percent. But that's he likes about you, it. Uh, yeah. Mm, and and I, I get the feeling that most of the girls know that and they don't want to hear the answer. Yeah, and okay. they also, they, they can't do that. So they really don't believe that that's what a guy is thinking. In other words, if they're having sex, they're having sort of an emotional experience. It's very hard for them not to. Right. And so to have a guy just stay there and not eventually develop feelings, which some guys do eventually, right? That, that, that's almost sort of like incomprehensible. I'll put it this way. 99% of guys could have sex within hours of a, uh, a pet dying. Hours, within minutes, on the pet. <laughs> Actually, using the that cat would be to prop crime. up, prop up the ass of whoever they were humping. <laughs> whereas, whereas women would average would be like two and a half days. Oh, if Snowball least. died, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God, it could be a lot longer. Okay, uh, but, well, but it could again, be longer, but that was the average for a two. It might be a half. violent crime though, Adam, if it were in the presence of the dead. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to get into that. I know, I know what Drew's looking for. <laughs> We're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. I'm going to go look for more monkfish on uh, the internet. And, Good times. Uh, we'll be back after this. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 Loveline on 94.7 NRK. We'll be right back in a minute. Welcome. Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Corolla on 94.7 NRK. Hey, yo, Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew in KC, Kansas City tonight, everybody. You know, I've been too busy to have a meal. I haven't had a meal. Well, I guess I did in Denver today. But mm -hmm. I just scrounged up, you know, the, the typical radio station uh, mm -hmm. dispensing, you know, snack machine. Yeah. And they had, like, these salami sticks. I thought, oh, I've gone to absolute the lowest point to try to get something to eat. They're so good. Oh, <laughs> really? Believe it. Oh, my God. It's hard to F up salami. Wow. God knows people have tried over the years. But there's good salami, but... So even a bad salami it. only gets so bad. I guess yeah. so. And plus, it's right. dried, it's petrified, it's good forever. Yeah. How bad is it going to get? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, next week, Sarah Rue, she's the uh, star, the uh, redheaded star from uh, Less Than Perfect, is coming in here. Bob Guinea, the uh, star of The Bachelor, which I uh, caught Monday night, and uh, seems like a good guy. Bruce Campbell, who uh, is a, well, sort of a cult film star, although. 
uh, The Evil Dead, which is uh, one of the movies he was in, which is uh, one of the all-time uh, horror movie classics. True, of course, you haven't seen it because I've seen that, and uh, you, we couldn't possibly have seen the same movie because then we could talk about it on the air. Right. That's how I know the movies you haven't seen. Right. I've seen them. Right. But uh, The Evil Dead, very, very good movie. Anderson, who did that? Who was, uh, was it, it was Scorsese? Sam, Sam Raimi. Did Sam Raimi do the first Evil Dead? Yeah, the first one, the second one, and uh, the third. Oh, uh, who who Sam Raimi did Army yeah. of Darkness too? Sam Raimi, he's uh, you know Spider Man now. Right, but didn't somebody do the first Evil Dead? Didn't somebody no, that's write what I it? Thought. Or it uh, let me look. I'll look into it. There was like a, a Scorsese, not a Scorsese, but a, I don't know. You thinking Oliver think Stone, it. the Conan, and the little no. Barbarian? No, I don't think it was that. Uh, look up the first day, uh, Evil Dead, there for me, buddy. Anyway, Bruce Campbell is uh, the star of all these uh, aforementioned movies, and uh, I'm I'm excited to meet him. Cheap Trick is coming in here next week, which is uh, again does not get their due. That band, they were like a crossover band. They did rock, they did like new wave, and they're all weird and huh. uh, good. So I'm um, looking forward to them. So good I, times the, for next week. Yes, Drew. A quick topic that I'm, I'm obviously obsessed about is my book, Cracked. Mm, no. And listen. No, listen, listen. No. And no. Uh, I'm so frustrated with the book buying public buying just, no. cr just crap. Yeah. And uh -huh. I, my book is good, and I want people no. to read it. No. Wait a minute. Let's no. just stay with me for a second. Somebody today said, no, you didn't write it to enough for the masses. And I thought to myself, no, it's good. That should be enough. No. You, you know what I mean? No. They go, no, no. you got to write something like Dr. Phil's diet book. That will sell lots of... I'm like, no, I don't. I, I want to write yes, something good yes. that will make difference for people. Yes, what? no, no. Help me, please. No, I'm trying to agree. I'm trying to agree. I just don't... I don't know when to say yes and when to say no. I say, I say no. You say, say yes. You start talking about Phil. I say yes. And now you want me to say no again. I, I'm trying to be supportive, Drew. Thank you. All right. So, Dr. Phil, y no, yes. I'm just saying. I'm, I mean, no. No. My book, yes. Sign no. on Amazon. I mean, yes. Damn book. Read okay. it. Okay. Important. <laughs> It's important to Drew, everybody. Hey, poor Drew, he busts his hump in here every night. Ten years he did this show for free. Still be doing it for free if he hadn't met me. All right. <laughs> Effectively. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. We got Carly, who's 5'3". We got uh, Steven, who's 5'10". Gets nauseous when he beats off. He's been on hold for uh, 59 minutes. Let's talk to him. Steven? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? You get nauseous when you jerk off? Yeah. You can't eat it, baby doll. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other problems? Um, uh, yeah, um, like when I'm having sex with someone, no. I'm, it's hard for me to actually come unless I feel like I'm doing something wrong. No, I mean, are you bipolar or on medication? No, um, I have diabetes. Diabetes, that's interesting. Has it been out of control? Uh, no. I got injected. Mm hmm. Hmm. Um, and uh, do you actually vomit after you beat off? Uh, I have one. Oh. So, it, it, Drew, if I vomited after I beat off, I'd be like a, uh, be like 90 you'd, pounds. Yeah, you'd, you'd be like a bulimic. I would. Be like Karen Carpenter. Because, uh... Do yeah, do is the nausea, do you think that nausea is emotionally based or it's some sort of biological reaction? Uh, I don't know. Do you, you are, you are, you are, you, are you religious? Um, a little bit. I am to a certain extent. Not too much? Uh, what, what, what religion? I'm um, Christian. All right. Your parents, you love them? Anyone, anyone do anything weird to you? Any babysitters touch your ding a -ling? <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh, Adam. Bingo. Mm, okay, we'll see some know. heavy. I'm smelling bogus now. Really? Who, what happened? Um, when I was, um, nine, I was, um, molested. By who? Uh, my brother. Your brother? Your biological brother? Yeah. How, How old is he? he? Uh, he's five years older than me. And did this happen more than once? Uh, yeah. What happened to him? Huh? What happened? Mm -hmm. He was on a lot of drugs. Yeah, see, they can hear you. Yeah. Okay, listen, uh, Stephen, you got to get some therapy if uh, what you say is true. And I'm not sure that it is, but on the other hand, oh, well, you don't think it is because I'm right. Yeah. Thank you. You just eat your salami. When you come into town, I'll give you a taste of my salami. How about that, Drew? I can't wait. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Yummy. All right. 
Stephen, if this if you were molested, then this is the cause of your nausea with your masturbation, and you're going to have to get some therapy though. for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Right, right. But the, I don't know. You know, guys do go bogus, but they usually don't go bogus with the molestation and the brother. It's kind of weird. It's like talking about your mom's dad or something. It's kind of yeah. But if your brother's the one who put you up to it or something, you know, he's sitting there goofing off with him. No. You just can't. You, you can't. You can't believe that I may be right, Drew. Oh yeah, you're always right. Thank you. All right, let's talk to uh, Melissa over here. She's the tallest of all the ladies at five three. Believe it or not. Wow. Melissa. Hi. We're going by height tonight, and even though you come in at a paltry five three, still <laughs> taller than any other gal on the board. Cool. Yeah. What's up? Um. Okay. So I started having sex with my boyfriend, and. The first time I had sex with him, I was like a day away from ending my period. And since then, every time we have sex, I bleed, but not like immensely, but it's like noticeable have, on white sheets. All right, so you have some mid-cycle bleeding, and that's commonly stimulated by intercourse. It's not an uncommon thing. It's more common when you're on the pill. You on the pill? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. You on the pill, Melissa? Mm -hmm. Oh. Are you on the pill? Yes. Well, there you go. <clears throat> all right. Are people not hearing me tonight? Uh, Drew, people don't really listen when you talk. I guess not. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And when you're not, you know, sitting next to me, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like your listening muscle. Right. You're my, yeah. Here's the way we should do this show. It's like you should just write down stuff on a little slip of paper and slide it across the console to me, like mid-cycle bleeding. And I'm like, uh, Melissa, you have mid-cycle bleeding? And then they'll answer, read. you know what I mean? Well, we'll, 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 come up, we'll come up with little things, like mid-cycle bleeding will just be MSB, okay? okay? Or MCB, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, I'll tell you an interesting story about screwing that up. Uh, Drew and KC, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, guys, bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. One eight hundred love one nine one. Wow wow wow! You can go, you can go, wow wow! You can go, you can go. We'll be right back. Love line on ninety four seven NRK is brought to you by Car Toys. Love line on NRK. Cameron, Portland. Love line NRK. It's Dr. Drew. Uh, Engineer Chris just said uh, while I was looking uh, of Bruce Campbell, looking for the uh, Evil Dead and Bruce Campbell's webpage, he said, he kind of walked up to him and he goes, uh, you're on. <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, you got to tell me when I'm on, you know, a little before I'm on. And he goes, you got five seconds. <laughs> 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 and it turned out it was more like eight seconds, so uh, you're, you're off the hook, kid. Yeah. You got five seconds. No. <laughs> All right. Well, that's. Uh, I'm going to take a leak, maybe number two, <laughs> and then swing by the uh, the uh, vending machine and make, make myself up a little uh, Orville Redenbacher's. You need anything? <laughs> uh, what are we down to now? Are we down to about four and a half seconds, or where are we at? Speaking, right. of, uh, speaking of your Duke again, did you figure out what your wife was calling about last night? My wife was calling um, because she didn't want to go on the air, but she wanted to tell you that um, she is. She yelled at me the other. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't That's like the funniest thing of all. But she yells at you. I love the whole image. People get to see that. She doesn't like me peeing in the sink. Okay, <laughs> and I tell her that. You, you, first off, you, you knew what you were getting into with me, and that's, you know, that's what I do. That's who I am. You're you know in. what I mean? It, yeah, it's, it's like wanting me to change religions or start rooting for another football team. You know yeah, what I'm saying? To stop paying in the sink. How dare she? I, I'm, I'm outraged. Right. Oh, my God. So she said, uh, 
I don't know, she says she does a lot of complaining while I'm asleep oftentimes. And then what I do is I、uh, yell things at her when I'm asleep that she finds entertaining later on because I, I'm actually at my best when I'm asleep. I'm funnier <laughs> than I am when I'm awake. It, people who listen to the show could tell you that.、Huh. So uh, she said, uh, I don't know, she got up early in the morning and she went to the bathroom and she, she was disgusted or something and she came out and she said, Do you have to pee where I brush my teeth? <laughs> And、uh, I yelled back, do you, do you have to brush your teeth where I pee? <laughs> And、uh, I don't know why she found that amusing. So、uh, now、do、she you, tells everybody that story. Do you,、uh, oh, it's very funny. How, how is it she knows you have peed there? Do you splash? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll remind, I, you, I'll remind I, you that you gave me a, a whole crap load of grief for、uh, splashing onto the toilet seat one time. Did、yeah. you splash onto the drain bore with your wife? No, that was her morning. She's fine. They occasionally find a pube on the, on the edge of the、oh, sink or something like that. Sorry. Drew, ever since、uh, you told me that,、um, well, there's two things. That you're in a sterile. You, you told me that you're in a sterile. <laughs> It's pow. Game on with the、uh, whizzing in the sink. Yeah, but your,、uh, your sack's not sterile. That's、oh, a fucking、yeah. uh, Amazon jungle. Yeah. I usually just set, it's a petri dish. I just、yeah. set that right on the sink. I set it、oh, right、on the edge. Oh, for God's sakes. And they're, they're, oh, my God. It's good times. I'll move my toothbrush on occasion. I'll clean things up a little bit. I'm not that worried about it. I'm just not. No Look, kidding. I, I never got sick about it. I, I eat stuff off the ground. I, people make way too much of that stuff. I don't know who's buying all these、uh, hand sterilizers and these sanitary wipes. And there seems to be a thing that's going on. I know we're getting away from the comedy of me urinating in my sink, but we're a little bit obsessed with germs and cleanliness. And there's other things we need to focus on. And this isn't one of them. And I think society or、uh, Madison Avenue has gotten everyone convinced that、uh, we're living in this environment that's just riddled with germs. And if we could clean them up, everyone would be healthier. I don't buy that crap. Too many people are taking antibiotics and using that、uh, antibacterial soap and all that nonsense. Please. I, I don't believe that stuff does anything. Just live your life, everybody. Pee in the sink, eat stuff off the floor. If something tastes bad, just、uh, you, you get a piece of cheese that's got some mold on it, just、uh, scrape it off and eat it. Well, mold's no big deal. Yeah, yeah mold's fine. True. As a doctor, is that stuff overdone? Well, Probably in, a, you know, in certain situations, but for the larger public health perspective, no, probably not. Well, but what、you、about、know? this stuff where it's like, this actually cleans and disinfects the well, air in your well, home? Well, that's, that's ridiculous. And people women are walking around spraying stuff everywhere, and it's all this stuff, it, it, all this household stuff. It's killing germs. Everything's well, killing germs. I, I think what you're getting at is that we, we re- respond to those things that massage our fantasy rather than things we really need to respond to, like right now. Keeping mosquitoes the hell off of us so we don't get West Nile virus. Right. We get you know a little. We, we, yeah, it, it, here's what it is we can't control everything and, and it drives us nuts. So we get obsessed、yeah. with things like killing germs and wiping things down and sterilizing everything. Meanwhile, those people are sick more than anybody I know.、Mm. They have mental conditions. All these people are allergic to everything and always claiming, always on antibiotics and always got something from some, somebody. BS. You're all weak willed pussies, right, Drew?、Uh, well, good times. Here we go. More calls. All right. I'm trying to figure out now who's tallest. No, just take some calls. No, I'm going by height tonight, Drew. I know you are. Oh, Bernardo. Bernardo is、uh, 5'9, but、uh, Michelle over here is 5'9, and that's a lady. We've got to talk、mm. to her, Michelle. Well, she trumps, yeah. Talk to me. <laughs> you, what's that? Talking to me is better than Bernardo. All right. You're、Agreed. 22. What's up? I'm 22.、Um, I don't know if it's really a problem, but I can only climax during anal sex. Ooh. See? Is, Aren't you glad is... I talked to Michelle instead of Bernardo?、Wow. <laughs> so, kind of so a weird is... problem. I don't know. I don't know if it's normal. I don't know what's going on. Is it only. Is that,、uh, you can't masturbate? You can't. No, or、um, nothing? No, it's only anal. So that's I the only way you've. I, I, I just. Nothing works. I had a boyfriend. You... What? How did you discover this? My you know I mean? new boyfriend that I've been with for a year and a half、um, just tried anal sex. I have never had a vaginal climax. I don't know how you say that, but I've never been able to that way and noticed that, that I was able to anally. Most women that have a climax during anal sex are multi orgasmic already. They have, they have it with, anal, with gen, genital intercourse, no problem. Really?、Hmm. Yeah. You know, this is. 
I'm thinking about her poor boyfriend in one of those sort of a uh, help Mr. Wizard kind of situations where, you know, eight months ago he's trying to talk her into anal mm -hmm. and now that's all he gets. All and I he's want. like, and he's like, uh, help Mr. Wizard. <laughs> I don't want to be a cornholer. <laughs> you know what I mean, Drew? Like yeah, I could see a guy really pushing for it, but it really... It, w it would take a bad turn if your lady said, "All right, that's it. That's what you want. That's what. That's all you're given that's now." Not all, you know. I I still like to do, you know, vaginally, but I, mm -hmm. would, you know, every girl wants to climax. So sure. How many times a week do you go for the? Uh, oh, several. I, I'm going to say about three times a week. I'm a busy girl. So. That is a that is is a is it true? You know what I'm well, saying? For a guy, is yeah. that kind of a? I mean, that's a commitment, right? That's a challenge, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's Poor just gotta guy, I know. climb that Bandini Mountain every time. <laughs> All right, another old so, so it's is it just um, is there something that I should do? Um, it's just another you know sort of uh, facet of the spectrum of, of sexual responsiveness in females. You know, we've thought we heard everything, and now here's another right. one. You know, just right. further to that's, confuse men. That's just you. Do you do you? Uh, yeah, now, it's do fine. You, does so he wear a condom? Does he wear a condom? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, right. yeah you got to you wearing a wearing a condom like you are putting on a. Uh, latex glove before you reach down a disposal to clean something no, out, but right? What, like that, what the that's the <laughs> reason you wear a condom when you're doing anal, not for protection. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, uh, but it is also protection. It's stuff that goes back and forth. There. But what, what, what does she do when this relationship ends, though, Adam? Mm. That's the more intriguing part Interesting of the Interesting that you uh, used the term Hello? ends. Yeah, term I ends. had, um, well, my previous boyfriend, he was just extremely too large to have anal sex. Oh, that's nice. So, so that's sort of, yeah. It's kind of sad that he's smaller. So maybe, I don't... I don't make know sure you make that point <laughs> abundantly clear to your man. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I hope he's okay. listening. But All no, right, so that's But wait fine, a minute, though. But, but, but that means she has to choose, should this relationship not work out, her next partner, in a way the field expands, but it becomes more specific, more narrow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. She can't just be with any guy now. No, I can't. That's great. Yeah. Well, all right. You'll know. You'll know whoever you're with. You'll know it's love. Yeah, that's true. And, and the uh, guys will be. Think about the guy. The, they've really. They've, they've hit pay dirt. The small penis <laughs> guy. <laughs> pay I dirt. Mean. Yeah. Well, uh, listen. <laughs> let me tell you something. A uh, small penis guys really have an advantage in the anal department, which is uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but I, I got a, I got a couple of buddies that ain't too big downstairs and enjoy the back door. What are you and, doing? And, and they're able, they've been able to work them into what would be one night stand experiences. Oh my you know God. what I mean? Who are you talking about? I, come on, I give me some, give, give me in. some uh, in, initials. I don't want to get anyone into trouble. Initials. I, 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 who's going to hear? How dare you? How dare you? That is so funny. How dare you? The, the point is, is it, it is, it's, it's less obtrusive and you're able to use it a little more often. It's you, isn't it, Adam? You're able to sneak it in. It's you. No, nah, how dare you? You know, that's, uh, that's not my way. But uh, what about this, Drew? I mean, obviously, we talk about this all the time, but the, uh, the vagina was meant to be penetrated. And expand. Yes, yes and, and expand, expand and all that. Yeah. The anus, I, I don't know. I, 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 it probably it's, it's, was never really meant to be a sexual orifice. Probably not, yes. Well, it was meant probably for excrement. Not. Probably not, yes. Well, I mean, the mouth wasn't really necessarily designed to have a penis put in it, but it seems to work fine, and there's some yeah. you know, long-term problems, right? And, and yet the mouth is sort of meant to, pr to pr fluff and prep for the delivery, you know what I'm saying? Right, it's all about right. procreation and, and evolution. So, right. So the anus is really out of the out of the equation. Yeah. All right. So, um, could well, God, here's I'm what I'm asking: if, if evolution goes forward, that's what I'm here. asking. <laughs> that's what I'm asking. <laughs> oh my God! I mean, oh your kids, God. kids, Drew. You know, oh they could have God. huge, open, Ani dilated anus. Anus. <laughs> anus. Just, just trash can size anus. And the uh, mouth and the vagina will become one. Yes, that'd be nice. Of course. Sure. It looked weird when they were chewing their food, but <laughs> other than that, I think that would be fine. I think most guys would be okay with that. Yeah, and then uh, so so, what will the woman of the future look like? So just well, huge, just huge her. anus, 
and the, the mouth and the <laughs> vagina have come on. So it's like, you, hey, you just belched up a kid. Be something like that. Well, right. we haven't. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give some. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a rendering. I'm gonna do a oh, couple nice. sketches when you come nice. by. Thank you, thank you. Come Put by on Sunday. Well, I'll show That's you good. that. All right, Time. let's talk to uh, Bernardo over here, who's five nine. And uh, did we answer Michelle? Michelle, I guess we did. Just told she was okay. She likes anal sex. That's yeah, fine. It's good times. She's good times. Yeah. Yeah. Bernardo. Yay. You're nineteen. Yep. Yay, What's yay. Uh, this one's for you, Adam. I have a question. I was wondering why your girlfriend, why women get mad when you look at other girls? Mm, well, they do. And guys get mad when women look at other guys, well, don't no, they? It's, like, it's just we don't notice that they're looking because we're not paying attention to them. Well, see, I go to concerts a lot. See, I'm a big Insane Clown Posse fan. Oh, yeah. And like, <laughs> there, there's like girls that you wouldn't even believe. And like, you pansy! <laughs> Everybody but, stares, and I'm the only one that gets yelled at for it. All right. Well, well, no, you're not. No, you're not. First no, of all, right. secondly, it's not that you stare; it's how you stare. Because guys, <laughs> auto, guys have a tracking device. They they can't. Their eyes they cannot help it. At least when they still have testosterone coursing in their veins. But you can do it in a way that doesn't hurt the feelings of your girlfriend. Mm. Uh, other thing too is is women realize that guys instinctually. Uh, fundamentally don't yeah. want to nest. Yeah. And I think they believe it's their job to sort of keep their eye on mm. this animal that's always... It's like if you have a dog that's always trying to get out of the yard, you have to keep an eye on him. You're yeah. sitting in the kitchen doing the dishes, you're looking out the window, you're keeping an eye. Where is he? Is the gate open? Did he tunnel yeah. under something? It's right. a constant vigil they have to, a vigilance they have to have to keep guys from not straying. And I think that's kind of, if you think about it, Drew, mm -hmm. think about, you know, how we always talk about how guys are sort of, eh, really uh, genetically not really built to stay with one person and that we have to sort of be broken a little bit. And that's fine. That's good for us. Fine. But women over the years, over the, the course of history, must have also had to evolve to break us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And to be more effective at doing that, right? Oh, oh yes, that's true. The, 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 there's a anthrop biological anthropologist named Lionel Tiger who says that throughout human history, women have tamed men, literally. Yeah, so maybe this is just part like uh, like sheep herding dogs or yeah. just seem to herd all the time, yeah. no matter what it is. If it's a yeah, flock of geese or a bunch of sheep, they go after them and put them in a circle. Maybe women over the years have been bred to do this. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. You know, our, mm -hmm. our, our listeners need to go buy my book. I'm watching it drift on Amazon. It's 37 now. Come on, guys. Show me some love, please. Drew, see, I told you I had that computer on, didn't I? I just you put lied. it on, yeah. You lied I, to my face. No, just <laughs> you lied to my face even though you're 2,000 miles away. What time is it in Kansas City? It's 1.14. Good times. I started, it's okay though, because I started at 3 a.m. Pacific time. Good times. Yes. What time, uh, what is it, two hours over there? Yeah. Yeah? Two hours. What is it, is yeah. it a couple thousand miles away, KC? Yeah. yeah. Sort of. 1,800 miles? Straight down from, basically from Chicago. All right. Well, it's good times. All right, let's talk to uh, Carly. I like that name. Carly? Yeah. You're 21. Yeah, I had a question. It's mainly for Dr. Drew, but I love you anyway, Adam. Mm. Um, I just had a question about my boyfriend is a recovering heroin addict, and mm. he's on um, Suboxone, and he's been on it now for a month, and he has no sex drive. So I was wondering if that's related to Suboxone, and also I was just going to ask your opinion of the drug. This is the uh, from buprenorphine, buprenex? Yeah, exactly. Right. I hate it. You hate it? I, Why? Yes, I, because I just it's just a, it's it's like a short acting methadone basically. It's just putting him yeah, back exactly. on another opiate. Okay. And he's got to come off drugs. He can't all the opiates suppress sex drive and you know he's uh -huh. got to be opiate free and I, I it's nice that it creates an office based um, sort of option for detoxing people, for people from heroin, uh -huh. but there's all this focus on detox as though that's the big thing in heroin. That's nothing. The problem with heroin addiction is the rehab, the treatment, the staying off opiates the rest of your life. And for that, he needs to be in a highly structured environment for at least three to six months and focus okay. on his recovery. So when he comes up, when he gets off this drug, he is going to have to work his ass off in recovery in order to stay sober. So would you recommend him staying on it right now and getting counseling, like heavy duty, well, follow, when he's off of yeah, it? Or? 
he will fall. He needs to be in a sober living. He needs to go to a residential program. He needs to be somewhere highly structured because when he comes off it, he's going to feel it. So he's going to okay, feel awful. I think his plan is the doctor that he saw at the clinic was saying to stay on it for a year to get him away from um, heroin and painkillers and stuff. Yeah, I know that's what they do. It's, so it's what, follow the direction. What's your I'm not recommendation because I would trust well, your recommendation. Well, I'm, I'm, follow the doctor's recommendation. There, that's my recommendation. We we don't yeah. fully know all the. Imp- impact of this drug it looks like a nice option but to think of it as the solution is a mistake he's got to be in recovery Mm. because he'll just go back when he stops using it he will Mm. Mm -hmm. all right now let's see uh i'm gonna give you a choice here drew yeah you want to speak to uh lauren who's uh 21 desires sex all the time never satisfied that's uh engineer chris's favorite how tall is she uh she's five two okay then there's uh, Angel, who's uh, five foot. I don't know that there's ever been an Angel over five three and a half. By the way, five is a uh, five foot's considered rangy for an Angel. Uh, she's uh, twenty, married two months, been in many bad relationships, once out already. She's been a hole for sixty minutes. We may talk to her. Although Lauren, who's talk to uh, Lauren. Poor, Lauren's, Lauren's five been two. a hole for eighty eight minutes. She's five two. Come on. All right, all right. Uh, she's taller than Angel. That's right. You know, if, if they were playing basketball, she'd be a, a power forward and Angel would be a guard. Them's the rules. All right. Lauren? Yeah. I'm actually 5'1", but... Oh, oh I'm just, sorry. Just oh, no. She's Still right. taller right. than Angel. Yeah, right. All right. Good. What's up, Lauren? Um, yeah, you said it. Uh, I just feel like I'm always sexually frustrated, even when I'm in a relationship. I never mm-hmm. feel like I'm getting enough. And I heard you say the other night that, like, that's weird because, like, women's... Su- um, sexual peak is supposed to be in their what? No, 30s, I didn't. I didn't 40s? say it's weird. It's, it's there's a couple possible. Do you have orgasms? It's not, see, sometimes and sometimes I don't. Vaginal okay. though, not. That, well, that's one possibility. The other is when people have been sexually abused, they 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 always crave sex and they can never be satisfied. That's one of the sort of curses of that trauma. Mm-hmm. Did that happen to you? Excuse me. Did that happen to you? No, actually. Hmm. Are you any history of bipolar illness in the family? Or no, you? I mean, I self-mutilated for a while. I guess that's... You, and you were not sexually abused? Were no. you physically abused? What? Where was the abuse? What kind of abuse? Um, my father was in prison for four times. For what? Different occasions. Drugs. And did oh, he do boy. anything to you? Excuse me? Did he I do did anything that? to you? Did no, he do anything to you? I feel but I mean, that doesn't count. I mean, does it? Not if, if you're not doing it every day. Did, did he uh, do anything to you or one of his friends doing it? Oh, anything? no. God, no. <laughs> no, true. He's just in jail four times. Hey, Lauren, do you have a boyfriend? No. I mean, I just got out of, like, a pseudo relationship two weeks ago. Because I was in school and I'm taking a semester off, so... But I'm back home. Well, why'd you get out of the relationship? Just because you moved? Well, yeah, he's in Connecticut. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I should have known that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> And are, you, are you with, are you, int- were you interested in the guy? Yeah, like yeah. Him. I mean, well, yeah. no, yeah, but not like for... Well. All right, it's a little love line reenactment, <laughs> Drew. Go ahead. Were you, interest, were you interested in the guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, really? not really. <laughs> but no, not really. Okay. Uh, Lauren's been through a lot. Yeah. I mean, with her uh, horrible incarcerated dad. Yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, well, little... not really. Well, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. She's, been, she's all over the map. So yeah. uh, how, about, how about, Lauren, how about a little therapy? How about you read Drew's book, Crap? Wait, well, why does that need therapy? Like, I'm not, like, upset about it. I'm, like, I'm frustrated, but I'm not. Well, don't worry about it. But the, but the fact that you have had a very seriously chaotic and traumatizing family system will make it difficult for you to have meaningful, intimate relationships. It may make you look for things like sex or drugs as a way of regulating and of managing your feelings, and you'll mm-hmm. see. If it does, then you need help. Okay. All right, listen, you know, go to the shrink, goofball. You got <laughs> screwed up. Can you do that? Well, that costs money. All right, Jesus Christ, everybody. I'm over everything. I don't have to go to anywhere. I don't need that rent a friend. Yes, you do. You all need it. Go talk to them. Go work something out. Start jogging and listening to classical but, but you music, did, right, you can, Yeah, or you can read. I did. I do get into this in more detail in my book, and it does. It, uh, <sighs> what's, what was her name? What was her name? Her name was Geraldine. Well, I, maybe I can send her a book. Uh, really? Did, yes. We have. We now uh, have books. Is, is, is Lauren well, there? Yeah. Yeah, Lauren's here. Okay, but is Junior, 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 Lauren there also? 
Junior Lauren. No, Lauren Junior Choir. Junior 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 Producer right, Lauren. Okay, yeah. Lauren, we're going to take your phone, your address, and I'm going to send you a copy of my book, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it, it goes into great detail of stories about people who've been traumatized and what they need. Okay. okay and I'll tell you crack. what you people need. need. You, need to, you need to take some walks. Do some exercise. Listen to a little classical music. That, that's for the mood, saying? though. That, that's for mm -hmm. mood, but, but for mm -hmm. getting over these sorts of interpersonal issues, it yeah. takes a lot you more. Gotta do it. Look, here's the problem. you got to do a little work, especially if your dad was in the, in the, in the jug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. We're going to take a little break, Drew. I right, want you to really think about your attitude during the break, all right? I've had a bad attitude? No, your attitude's been fine, but I want you to think about it. Okay, I will think about it. Yes, sir. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back. Love Line will be right back. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom. The most trusted for over 80 years. Love Line. Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla, 94.7 NRK. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Hey, Adam, I was listening to the, uh, the public service announcements, and there was one on the President's Council on Physical Fitness. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they still subject kids to that. They, do they? Uh, pub, public humiliation. Who can do pull-ups? Who can do sit-ups? Who can do push-ups? Before the musculature in the body is developed to be able to handle that. And, you know, the kids that can do eight pull-ups end up not being the athletes later in life anyway. Yeah. You ever notice that? And there's all yeah. this stuff about, oh, should, <laughs> should, we, should we be detecting you know, obesity in kids? Uh, might make them embarrassed, might humiliate them, and yet they subject them yearly to public humiliation. Obviously, the overweight kids get singled out in front of their peers. Yeah, well, here's Crazy. the well, here's the thing, and it does. And what does start, it assess? Nothing, right? It does start early, which is uh, when you're a kid. It, you know, you take a random group of nine, ten-year-old boys. Uh, a, a small percentage of them, or one or two of them, will be able to do. 15 chin-ups and That's then there'll right. be a percentage of guys who can't do it and it really has nothing to do with anything. But and then there's other than that's kid how they are. That can't even oh, yeah, hang there. Might be a, they might be a little fatty kid. Yeah, he deserves to be made fun of. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, but uh, when I played uh, Pop Warner football, I think my first year, like when I was uh, eight years old, uh, I remember uh, the coach, maybe I was nine, maybe it was my second year. I think I started when I was eight, <clears throat> second year. Coach brought in a uh, barbell, and he started wow. packing it on with weights, and he said, I'm going to find out who the strongest kid here is uh -huh. and who can, who can lift it over their head. Uh. They just kept doing it. Huh. You know who that kid was, Drew? Uh, Ace Corolla? That's right. Whatever. That's <laughs> right. But then, uh, then puberty kicked in, and uh, forget about it. Yeah. Everyone else got stronger than me. And, and See? Chris became so superhuman. What's, what's it mean? Hey guys, it doesn't mean anything. Sure. Forget, what's that, up? forget that other PSA. Got, have you heard the new one that I've been Talking playing? Talking to me? No, I haven't heard it. Go right, I got I to play. You guys got to hear this. It's great. All right. Hello, may I help you? Uh, hello, can I ask you a few questions about the apartment you have on Park Street? What was your name? My name is Juan Hernandez. It's been rented. Oh, it's gone? Hello? <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Sanjay Kumar. I am calling about the apartment on Park Street. It's not available. It's not available, but this? I just now saw it in the paper. I'm guessing it has something to do you? with discrimination. Uh, my name is Tyrone Washington. I'm calling about a place to rent on Park Street. No longer available. It's not available now. Nope, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Hello? It's like, it's like yes, insulting hello. everybody. Yes, My name is Graham Wellington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. Is that still available? Yes. yes it is. Oh, it is? Yeah! Oh, Really? I'd love to make an appointment. Yeah. Housing discrimination is illegal. If you think you've been a victim because of your race, color, uh, national origin, sex, religion, disability, That's or family right. status, More call 800-669-9777 or visit fairhousinglaw.org. Fair housing. It's not an option. It's the law. Hello what? there. My name be Tyronius. <laughs> I be's wanting to rent your apartments, miss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I know. Everyone's being discriminated against, Drew. It's a horrible, horrible society we live in. It is horrible. 
I just, I, I like it, uh, I like it, uh, I, I, I love that message, by the way, that constantly just gets rammed up everyone's ass, which is we live in this horribly discriminating society. You want, you want discriminating, go travel around the world. You go we'll see the warring tribes. Go check out the Asians. See how they treat uh, their fellow Asians. Huh? There's, I'll show you discrimination, please. And every year with the, you know, Martin Luther King's uh, birthday, it's always like, well, we've made some progress, but there's a long way to go. A long way to go. Really? What's going on? Where's the discrimination? Show it to me. Please, everyone, get past it. Move on. Start a life. Stop worrying about what group you're in. Just take care of your kids. Take care of yourself. That's fine. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the pussy white man just staring at his feet all the time, feeling horrible, you know? Oh, we, we did all these horrible things. I didn't do squat. Neither did anyone I know. So let's move forward. Hello, I'm Lucius. <laughs> Said it many times. Uh, listen, I have a, uh, I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of um, nephews that, uh, who are half German. Their dad's German. He comes from Germany. Did, should, are they responsible for the Holocaust? Of course not. Should they sit home and should they get battered by it every other day about uh, what uh, Nazi sympathizers they are and how the, they're responsible for all the Jews' deaths? Of course not. It's ludicrous. They had nothing to do with it. It's the same way as 99% uh, of white America. Let's just move past this, can't we? Easy for me to say. I'm just a white guy. I get everything dropped in my lap. Yeah. Yeah, like when I signed up to be a fireman, and it took me five years to take the test. It took everyone else six months to take because I'm a white male. Yeah, oh, I don't know what discri- I don't know what it's like to be discriminated. Sure I do. Of course I do. Please. I have nappy hair and big front teeth. That's discrimination. Yes, Drew? Yes. I'll tell you discrimination. Fat chicks and guys with hair on their back. That's discrimination. Thank you. Let's just get past this and quit pretending. And listen, government, stop spending all the money trying to figure out, trying to, uh, trying to uncover the genie of discrimination. It doesn't exist. I'm not saying that there aren't a-holes out there, and I'm not saying there's not, ra- there's not racists out there. They're out there. They're out there on all sides. But uh, is, is are groups being held down because of uh, somebody, some other group? No. Groups that are being held down are doing it to themselves. Now let's get past this and move on. Yes, Drew? Let's move on, yes. Oh, see, Drew never wants to say a word because you can't say anything because uh, you're racist if you point it out. Please. No, I'm just saying, let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, shut up, Drew. You're such a puss. You, you, never, you never say less than when I bring this up. And you know exactly what I'm saying. Racism no. in 2003 is not a problem. And that's not a racist remark. They're groups that do well, and they're groups that don't do as well, and that's because of what they put in. All right. Well, there's a slight. There's a slight. Um, did they have an a- Did they have an Asian guy on that? On that as an example of that? No, but as as how a result come no of, Asian guy? But as a result of what? how come no Asian guy on that te- on that PSA? Why? Because the Asians are doing good. Why? Because we don't, we let them off the hook? Oh, yeah, Asians, let them go. Let's focus on the blacks, the Jews, the Mexicans. Let's focus on everyone. The Asians, you, you'd be okay. No, we don't like anybody. But the Asians work hard, they band together, and they do fine. That's why they're doing fine. Thank you. Shouldn't they have an Asian represented in that commercial, Drew? Yes. W- why do you think he wasn't there? They, am I, let me make my point that I was going to make, which was that there is things that have happened in the history of this country that take generations to wash out. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, the good. We're done. Let's move on. Well, All right. Yeah, I'm not saying any of that stuff was right. I'm just saying nobody was here when that went on. I know. Um, my, my wife wasn't here. I wasn't here. My family wasn't here. My nephews weren't here. No one I know was even here during those times. All right? All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's talk well, to... But why no Asians or Jews in that? Don't we discriminate against Asians and Jews, Drew? Yeah. How come they weren't represented in that, that PSA? Because they're mm-hmm. doing good. Also because we you. can't, we can't uh, characterize them mean-spiritedly on the telephone. What? What do you mean? I, I can, you, you, just get a, you just get a guy who sounds like a Hasidic Jew, like a rabbi oh. on the other. All right. All right. What, you don't you're think right. we could do you're that? Right. Well, you no, don't think right. we could do Asians? Uh, Asians make fun of more than anybody as far as the voice go. 
All right. Come on. All right. Yeah. Nick? Yeah. Yeah, who was in that group, by the way, Drew? Black, Mexican? Indian? Indian, Indian or Middle Eastern, I think is what they were uh, going for, right? Drew? Hmm. Yeah, I thought it was Indian, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to it, think it, the other ones. It, it was, but I think they were trying to go for the sort of middle... I think they were steering toward the uh, Middle Eastern. All right. All right. Nick? Yeah. You're 23? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, I'm having trouble meeting the ladies. I go about six foot, and I'm about hover between 250 and 260 pounds. Yeah. That ain't hovering. That's 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 firmly planted between uh, <laughs> yeah, 250 yeah, pretty and 260. Much. But, um, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I go out, you know, I have a couple buddies that I go out, like, to bars and stuff with, but... Yeah. Like, Can't get laid. Yeah. Yeah, because you're a big guy and you're discriminated against. I agree 100%. But uh, and fat guys have it the worst. Tell me about it. I know. <laughs> but, no, but, but people aren't sympathetic to your plight because they think you brought it on yourself and you quite possibly could have. Oh, I, I, I definitely could have. I definitely had a hand in it myself. I know yeah. that. But, I All mean, right. my mom was kind of big. My dad was kind of big. Yeah. Like you're going to be kind of you're gonna be kind of big, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure I got some of the genes, but... All right, so here's what you got to do. You got to just be in the best shape, whatever shape you're in will let you. And I guess what I'm saying is, is lose some weight. Yeah, you may never be 190, but you right. may be 228. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Now, what do you think? I mean, you got to just exercise and do a little dieting. I mean, that's yeah. for your health okay. anyway. You should be I mean, right. and uh, also, Nick, there may be a personality problem as well. Yeah. The, that has a hand in it, too, because I, I was always real shy. And right. I, I'm never that outgoing with the ladies, either. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, look, it's uh, it's difficult. And look, as a 23-year-old guy, I don't know what you're doing right now, but sometimes 23-year-old guys aren't exactly hot commodities on the open chick market. What do you... Are, are you working? Oh, yeah, I work full-time. What, what do you do? do, you do? <laughs> I dispatch tow trucks for AAA. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that gets chicks wet. <laughs> I hear no, about that. It's like, do you get to talk on a CB? Uh, yes, I do. To the actual tow trucks? Uh-huh. Oh. That well, is you know, so that, yeah. that kind of sucks, too, because whenever they ask me what I do, they always tell me their complaints about their nightmares about having their cars towed. Right. So right yeah. off the bat, I'm like, yeah. yeah. Well, I, it is I, horrible not, what you yeah. do. Yeah. But yeah. you dispatch them for triple uh, AAA. Right? I mean, isn't he, isn't he saving lives, you know, people broken down by the side of the road? Knight in white and shining armor. Knight in shining armor? Yeah. All right. Anyway. Boy, start talking about race. Drew clams right up. That's be a good <laughs> way to get you to shut up. <laughs> All right. Listen. And Drew, here's the problem, too. It just it ends up sounding like weird dead air, and then it sounds like it's, like, uncomfortable and strange. At least just chime in or something, even if you're too big a wuss to talk about it. You can at least uh, go like, uh-huh, or touche, or here, here, or something like that. You know what I'm okay. saying? All right. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. Nick's got to lose the weight, and being a dispatch for a tow truck company is probably not a, what you call a uh, P gig. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to focus... Guys, focus on your career, focus on making some money, focus on getting ahead in life. The women will come. All right? All right. We'll be right back. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Love Line on 94.7 NRK. Four seven N R K Love Line Love Line Love Line Love Line Love Line Love Line Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Doctor Drew. Oh, forget about that phone number. Hey, uh, Drew. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. Engineer, uh, on-site engineer Chris over here. What do you think his nationality is? Mexican. This so seems where the smart money seems to be there, but I don't know. It, 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 he's he got some of that in him, but I, it's uh, I'm not Lebanese? reading it. Lebanese? No, no. Now he's pissed. Armenian? <laughs> oh, he now he's throwing punches in the air now. Drew. <laughs> Hispanic, yeah, yes, yeah, Hispanic. Yeah. Drew. 
I okay. told you. Now, well, I thought you were leading me off the trail there. Chris is a, not a good Hispanic name. It's very confusing. Perez. Ooh. Last name Perez? Yes. All right. And Chris, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very confusing. Christopher? All right. All right. All right. Perez. All right. All right. It's good times. All right. Uh, Drew, where are we? You got the computer. Yeah, I do. I'm going to go by uh, who's been on hold the longest, all right? All right. And that's uh, definitely Angel. Speaking of uh, Hispanic, there's a good Hispanic name. Angel? Yes. You Hispanic? Yes, I am. All righty. What's up? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. First time for calling. Um, that's all right. Okay. I've been, with this guy, I've been with my husband now for a year. Mm -hmm. um, we've been only married for the last two months. Um, when I got, when I got together with him, I was, you know, I, I loved, I loved him. I still do love him, but it's like, as time's progressing, it's like, I don't know if it's just that I'm hitting that one, you know, it's like, we'll hit that one year mark and it's because I have a really bad track with relationships. Why? Um, I don't know. I, when I was, when I was, uh, still in my addiction, well, I, what was, what was your drug of choice? Methamphetamine. Oh, and when you see, that's... Angel is the number one name for meth addicts. Like, you should be able to sue your parents if they call you Angel and, and, and sue them for your addiction or male or female. or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, oh, male, yeah. Even worse, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how's your recovery going? I've been, I'll be clean now on the 29th for four years. Four years. And how old's your, your husband? 22. Why'd you guys mm -hmm. get married so young? I have a son, I guess a lot of it was the whole reason I, I, I actually jumped into marriage was because I have a son. I him and his father him, him and his father my I'm sorry. His father right. and I broke up uh when he was two weeks old. I was in another relationship. We broke up and then I just decided that my son was not gonna have men coming in and out of his life. All right, well, here's what you need to do. You need to well, commit yourself yeah. to this relationship. It's probably getting boring and uncomfortable, yeah. right? Because it's yeah. actually becoming intimate, and that's horrifying to you. Well, you the thing is, it's like, I've, okay, I've cheated on him twice, and oh. Oh. it's like, I'm... You guys, you've only been married for two months, right? We have to been together for a year. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, it's been a whole 12 months you've been together, all right? Yeah. And, Who'd you um, cheat on him with? And it's just, it's like, I'm start. some days I wake up and I'm completely in love with them. And I, you know, in other days, all right, right, I'm okay. thinking, Let me, all right, blah, blah, blah. what would you like to be single? Okay, is he, is he, well, you kind of found out what it was like to be single by uh, humping a couple of guys. He's a nice guy, this guy. I've actually husband. never been single for more than a month or two. Yeah, well, look, here, let me tell you something. If you go from guy to guy to guy or girl to girl to girl to girl and you say, I've never been single... That's being single. You're just moving from one partner to the next, banging the bejesus out of them. <laughs> Here's what it's like to be single. You have a whole series of relationships, God willing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, you on top of a new guy every six weeks, is being single. So yeah. you know what it's like to be single. They last longer than six weeks. Okay, Maybe. but listen. Let me, let me just work, work, work things out. Is your, is your husband a good guy? Yeah. A little lazy, but good. All right, but a little lazy, you're just building the case. He's a good guy. You can't handle the intimacy, just like Drew said, and you're starting to get starting to get weird. I don't... Okay. First off, no more kids. Oh. Yeah. You should not be a mother. What are you doing to prevent that? I'm on the death row shot. Good. Oh, go. Good girl. Yeah. Going to send you out a windbreaker. <laughs> okay, so no more kids. And then number two, you can't focus on what you want to do. You got to focus on this kid. Yep. You got a kid, and you you have to not follow your impulses. Because let me tell you about your impulses. They're horrible. They're, they're bad. Your impulses got, turned you into a meth addict. Your impulse uh, got you pregnant as a teenager. Your impulses got you hooked up with abusive guys. You have a horrible impulses. So, and your impulses make you cheat. So if you have an idea, ignore it. It's a bad one. That's right. You, ha you have an addicted brain. It's a diseased brain. And so the things that are attractive to you, the things you're driven to do are part of the disease, and you cannot rely on your brain to make decisions. You've got to check everything out with your sponsor. All right. Get back into the program. Get with the sponsor. Don't break up with this guy and stop cheating, and don't tell him you cheated. That'll just end up breaking you guys up, which is what you want, and you'll win on a technicality. Of course. And listen, everybody. 
All you people out there who have hor horrible ideas, stop listening to yourself. Yeah. If you, I don't. And look, it, it, this is uh, there. Are a lot of a lot of you have horrible ideas for songs. Don't make them. A lot of you have horrible <laughs> ideas uh, architecturally. Do not execute them. I have a heroin you know addict patient. Saying? Yeah, who's who's learned that whenever he has an idea, he does the opposite. That's right. This is why this. I've. <laughs> it was a great day in the uh, Corolla history when I explained this to my family. <laughs> <laughs> What do you attribute your success to, son? You guys. I do the opposite of whatever you guys would have done. Did you actually say I did, did tell them that? that. Yes. How was that received? I still think they feel, felt like, uh, almost like uh, almost like a batter that gets hit and uh, walks in the winning run. You know, still kind of feels like a hero. You, you, oh, you know what I mean? God. That is too funny. I, I did I did explain to my family that I use them as a negative template. You know, who whatever there? it is who, they who would is, do. I, 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 I think I've given it to my mom and to my dad. Uh, both separately? Yeah, yeah. That's whatever you guys, I just think what, you know, I didn't, I didn't nail it home, but it was the general gist was, I think, uh, what would you guys do? And I do the opposite. <laughs> well, Drew, you can't, you can't argue with the results. Well, look, it's luck anyway. It's who you know, Adam. We found that out last a couple of days ago with Lauren. Yeah. It's who you yeah. know. It's, it's luck. Yeah. What? What, yeah. what else did she say? I was. I mean, my my mom lives in the house that uh, her uh, her mom lets her squat for about the last fifty years. It's a, a nice piece Wait, of waiting. Ass. She's waiting for her luck to change. <laughs> That's for right. The, <laughs> and my dad lives in a house that uh, his uh, his uh, second wife's mom basically bought for him. So uh, their plan not not a great plan, whatever that plan may have been. Not not going to hold it against him, but I'm going to use it to my advantage. You see that, Drew? Yes, I'm, t I'm turning. I'm turning lemons, lemons into lemonade. Into lemonade. Yes, that's what I do. And by the way, feel free, everyone, whether it's your own family or friends, find the f ups, find who's not having success, and go ahead and do the opposite of that. Just like you know, we always do this in life where they go, we need positive role models. Look around, find people that are successful, talk to those people. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But sometimes people don't have successful people around them. They have people that are F-ups around them. Look at those people and do the opposite. It's the same as doing what a successful person would do. And if you're an F-up, do the opposite of what your impulse is. That's you. right. That's why we're geniuses, Drew. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, talk to... I'm going for on hold uh, second least here. And let's talk to uh, Michael. Michael? Yeah. Yeah. I hate Michael already. You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Um, my girlfriend and we've been uh, sexually active for about I don't know maybe like three weeks now, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I brought up the idea of a threesome with her, mm -hmm. and uh, sure. she seemed, you know, like she was into it at first, and uh, I, I asked her if she wanted to bring one of her friends, and I, I told her there was a girl that I had in mind, mm -hmm. and after she found out about who it was, she did seemed a little reluctant to do it, but the girl is that a friend of hers? No, it's a friend of mine. You know what? Mm -hmm. It's like I think it's like being bum rushed. You know what I mean? He go. He, she's probably like thinking, "Oh, we're finally physical. And then he then he springs this. Jesus, and she's like, uh, "Oh, that sounds cool." And then he's then he's on to it. He's got I've got this one lined up and blah blah. She's mm. shocked probably. Yeah, it's like being bum rushed if you replace the B with a C. Yes. Um, you've only been sleeping with her for a couple of weeks. You're uh, you're gonna try this one on for size? Aren't you scared you're gonna offend her? Maybe she'd break Lose up with her? you. I don't know. She's she's kind of into it. Do you not care? No. I mean, you don't she's, care. She's she's into it. She doesn't seem like she's yeah. being too offended by it. Well, I think because you like well, I said, why? Well, 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 but you said she's not into it. You said you brought up the girl and she's not into it. Well, yeah, that's it's only because when she saw her, like she she knew she had an asshole the size of a mason jar. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Hey, remember I said I hated Chris uh, yes. one syllable mm -hmm. into his uh, call. Yes. Yes. Remember that. Yes. Yeah, instincts never wrong about that. Are they? No, no. All right, uh, C and Hill, uh, Michael, and uh, he didn't deliver that. He didn't even deliver it in a grat gratifying way. So eh, it was okay. It was okay. Right. I just I take solace in knowing it was on hold for forty minutes. That's we'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. One eight seven seven eight eight nine date. 
I want to thank uh, phone screener uh, Tara. Don't call me Tara, goddammit, for doing a job all week long. Although I don't I know if she heard how, she, how you abused her last night. Well, she wasn't here, ironically. Okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, phone screener Brian for doing a fantastic job all week long. I want to thank producer Ann for uh, booking the big names. Uh, not so much for this week, but next week. We got some uh, people that uh, not only are good guests, but I'm actually interested in speaking to them, which is hmm. uh, a real change of pace. I uh, want to thank uh, Junior, 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 producer uh, Lauren for uh, explaining to us uh, how radio works. <laughs> I'm never going to forget that. Uh, I want to thank. Uh, I want to thank Engineer Chris for doing a fantastic job over here and learning to uh, nod and smile when I tell jokes. And, of course, uh, the magic fingered one, Engineer Anderson, the Liberace of the potentiometers. So, until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Oh, that Mother Teresa, bitch. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.